this is a classic I know what I want to do without knowing exactly how it's going to happen. So there is no way I could have predicted that the mark was going to show up that way. So you work with it as it shows up. Hey everyone, I'm Marianne Mitchell. Welcome to Whole Artist Mastery where you discover your true artistic voice and learn how to make compelling work and to know how you want to show up in the world as an artist. So I love hearing from all of you in the comments below each video and several, maybe even more than several of you have said how much you enjoy my process videos and hearing how I think as I walk myself through the development of a painting. So I'm going to focus on that today with this painting here and let you in on the way I think. And so as I go, I'm going to be telling you kind of, you know, in a flow state, what what's going on in my mind and why I'm making the decisions that I make as I go forward in this painting. So I hope you enjoy watching. So the first thing I want to say is that this painting is in deep in phase three of the development of a painting which I call integration and what that means is integrating your emotional connection with your compositional decision decision making process so at this point, you know, I very much like what's happening in terms of the colors and the composition. And I've been spending some time just looking at it and taking it in and seeing how it feels on a deeper level than just simply reacting to the composition and color. And what I'd like to push here is the sense of going back into this crevice of brilliant light surrounded by more neutral colors. So that was kind of the, the germ of the piece from the beginning where I um, was surrounded by colors in the world around me that were kind of muted and sea foam greens and um, muted turquoises and grays from rocks and brilliant sunshine on the water. And so in doing little pieces that were capturing that, I was really inspired to have this crevice of light that evokes a sense of hope surrounded by the, um, the colors that are more muted to give me a sense of hope and to give people who look at the painting a sense of hope uh, when they take it in. <laughs> so, okay, so, the, so given that, the first thing I'm gonna do is brighten this just a little bit in here. So that means I'm gonna start with cadmium yellow and I'm making what um, many people would say is an Indian yellow and I make Indian yellow because the color itself is very transparent and actually doesn't show up as well in the photographic process as if you take a little bit of cad orange and add it to your cad yellow which are two much denser pigments. So I'm going to take half of this away and add a little bit more orange here. And now I have both of these to work with and I'm going to add just a drop of walnut oil. My dropper is not working. I'll try another one here. There we go. And a drop over there. And mix this together here. Just two little drops really does make this a lot more uh, spreadable. And all right, so now I'm going to take my squeegee and start with the lighter yellow and just 
very quickly here. This is a classic, I know what I want to do without knowing exactly how it's going to happen. So there is no way I could have predicted that the mark was going to show up that way. So you work with it as it shows up. And what I'm trying to decide is now, now what I need to do is turn it upside down because in trying to figure out where to go compositionally, you want to see how it's working in both directions. Um, or the upside down direction from the direction that you ultimately want the painting to be, or at least at this point. This is kind of interesting this way too. Um, what I'm trying to decide is, do I make this a sharp line? I also don't particularly like the curve here. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is, Come in with a brush now, and this is a Princeton brush flat number 16. And come in with the darker orange and just try and make this a little Sharpen this up a little bit more. So you can also take the edge of this and draw. And rub the paint a little bit to blend it. I'm trying to make a division that's both sharp and irregular at the same time. That's that's a difficult thing to do. <laughs> um, so the way I do that is to rub this more. I'm rubbing it out into the color on the other side. Now what I need to do is I'm going to take this and rub across here like that. Pull this down more. If I try to stay within the confines, I'm, it's going to tighten me up, which will make the composition tighter and more contrived looking. So one thing I'm going to do is take this up like this. Maybe turn it upside down, working within the confines of my studio here, <laughs> and pull it down like this. So that there's, and what this achieves is both that sense of a sharp line and fuzzy at the same time. So now I'm going to turn it around and you can see I kind of like what happened in here. Totally unpredictable. So rather than coming in and making this sharp by using this color up against this edge, I'm going to come down here now and instead of making this edge sharper with the red, I'm going to use this gray green color to make it sharper. So let's see, I'm going to start with a little bit of white here and I have some colors over here on the side from previous painting day that I'm going to use to just see if, if I can make this color. I have a little bit of green and um, I want to make it a little less blue. Let's see, I'll use some of this. It's, it's really great to save your colors for two reasons, or maybe even more, but the two obvious reasons are for economy, because this, this costs money here, and if I can reuse it, I can. And the second reason is because I don't have to mix these colors up again. They're just right there ready for me to use, which is really great. So let's see, maybe just a little bit more green because the green 
will work with the red. They're opposite colors. So I always hold it up against the color here and see it picks up that color. So let me try that. I'm not going to add any uh, liquid, any of the walnut alkyd oil because I want this to, I don't want it to be too slippery in there. And in fact, I'm going to turn it upside down to do this because I'm left-handed and I'm going to pull it this direction. So take just a little bit of this Again, I want to make this so that it's not so sharp, but at the same time makes a division. And I'm going to turn it back around. See? And see how that pushes this red back more? And now I'm going to come in here with some of this lighter color. Um, and a little bit of the yellow here, more white. And let me just make this mark and then we'll take a look at it together here. And so I'm going to come in with our little brush instead and just kind of brush this over like this. Travel it up, blend it into the yellow. And pull it down here. And now it's time to stand back and take a look. So now it's time to take stock of what has happened in a period of time that you've been painting. And what's so important at this phase of a painting is to make a mark, stand back. Make a mark, stand back. So that you can see what's going on up close, but also from further away, because you have a different experience. You know, we often get so wrapped up in details that when we stand away, it's really hard to see the details. So as I stand away, I see how much more this red is really popping because of what I did in here. So in the next video, you'll see me coming back into this area and trying to figure out, you know, do I want to keep this line here? And if so, how do I want to integrate it a little bit more? and then working a little bit more on the surfaces around. So I hope this was helpful to you. I enjoyed sharing a little bit about my process and I look forward to continuing with this painting in the next video. So if this was fun and you enjoyed it, you can press that little like button and head on over to the Whole Artist Mastery website where there's lots for you to peruse and take in and I invite you to become part of the community. You can sign up and subscribe for the newsletter and well, really more just sort of information that I send out to people, things that I find provocative and thought-provoking, thought uh, emotionally provocative and intellectually thought-provoking. So enjoy and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching.